how's everyone doing today? It's Ash the Coyote here with a very special video for you today. So today we're going to be answering some questions from Google. So how this will work is I'm going to type in why do furries and then I'm going to let Google auto complete the blank. This should be pretty funny and a little tiny bit cringy at points but it's going to be a grand old time. Before I get started I want to ask you all a question. What kind of content would you like to see more of on my channel? Seriously I, I would love to know. Would you like to see more videos like this? Would you like to see more documentary oriented content? Let me know in the comments section below. All right, you ready for this? I don't know if I'm ready for this. Oh my God. You ready for this, Google? Let's start it off with number one. Why do furries like wolves? I mean, I'm gonna go off on a branch here and say that kind of like wolves and foxes are like the two most common species in the fandom. I think they're the most common species in the fandom because they kind of appeal to that wild side, that more naturalistic side, that side on the other side of like our humanity. And part of becoming an animal is to embrace that more naturalistic existence. And by proxy, you end up with a lot of people choosing fursonas that are wild. Like the magic of picking your fursona is kind of finding something that you can kind of identify as. And wolves are very commonly portrayed in media as like these pack animals, these social animals, and a lot of folks I think crave that kind of dynamic in their lives. Of course you end up with the alpha and the omega thing. Terrible movie by the way, don't watch that. You know they made eight of them? It's horrifying! Why would you do that? Seriously though, don't watch Alpha and Omega. Also, anybody who's been watching Beastars, I mean, Lagoshi, oh my god, he's so cute. I love that character so much. Oh my god. Oh my god. Really? Really, Google? Really? Are you gonna do this to me? I guess we're doing this. We're doing this. You ready for this? Why do furries like diapers? Yeah. I know, right? Like, ugh, really? Really? We're going there. Yeah, we just went there. Okay, so like, here's the deal. Not all furries like diapers. Uh, there's a subset of furry that does, and that's, that, that's okay. That's their thing, you know? Like, no, no king shaming here. You know, like, people want to be who they are. Great. More power to you. There we go. More power to you. I think it's tacked on to furry because, you know, like furry, it's kind of like you're dressing up like a giant stuffed animal by proxy, you know, like it attracts people that might be a little childish. Just, just venturing a guess there. Just, just throwing that out there. Moving on. Ooh, this is a good one. I like this question. Why do furries matter? Well, I've thought a lot about this over the past year because, you know, like I made the film about furries and I've reflected a lot on what my furry experience has been. And honestly, I think furries matter because they offer a very unique social space that you can't really get anywhere else in the world right now. Um, it's a very open and accepting community. It has a very large LGBT presence. So as a trans individual myself, something that blew me away is that statistically right now, almost 14% of the fandom is transgender. Can you believe that? That's amazing. Especially when you consider that out in the real world, that number is more like 0.2%. That's a freaking huge gap. And the same goes for other members of the LGBT community too. I would say the vast majority of our members are LGBT. We all kind of embrace a more artistic and vibrant lifestyle. And on top of that, we have an economy that is primarily focused on the arts. I mean, that's another thing that just doesn't exist outside of the fandom. It's a community that is built around art, built around the arts in general. Almost all our top creators are women. That's wild too. And we're kind of creating this artistic economy that just fuels creativity. It fuels artistic expression and it allows us to really explore our identities in ways that you don't get anywhere else. The Furry Phantom matters because it's a safe space for expression and creativity without the limitations that you run up against in the real world. Oh my god. Okay, why do furries wear harnesses? Well, let me tell you. Again, not all furries wear harnesses. I've worn one once or twice. For me personally, I wore it for aesthetic reasons because I think they look cool. I mean, people can like stuff because it looks cool, right? Um, I think other people wear harnesses for, let's just say, different reasons. But in general, I mean, it kind of plays with that whole aesthetic, you know, like, let's say you're a husky suitor, you know, you want to put on a harness because, you know, like, husky dogs pull sleds and it's kind of like a part of, like, the animal persona. That's cool. Um, I think that they offer a very unique kind of look and I think that they look good. So, yeah. Why do furries say ooh? <laughs> oh god. Here we go. Down the meme hole. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. Why do furries say ooh? Well, this coyote lives under a rock and totally missed that meme when it came out. It's so 
strange. So, like, my understanding is that it came off like this kind of like copy pasta kind of like rap that somebody wrote, and then somebody performed, and then it got animated, and it got animated by furries, and then it got totally ridiculous, overblown, and strange, and everybody's like, ooh, ooh, now this is your bulge, and all that stuff, and it just goes crazy, right? Furries say that because it's a meme. If you need more education on that, look up Bulgy Wolgy on YouTube. You'll get the full education there. Oh yeah. Why do furries wear tails? Uh, it's because we're animals. I mean, animals have tails, dogs have tails, cats have tails. That's why we wear tails. I mean, don't you think that would look a little weird if I was walking around without a tail? I mean, that would be the strange thing. Can you imagine a coyote without a tail? I don't want to see a coyote without a tail. I'd be upset if a coyote didn't have a tail. You know that? Ah, uh, not again. Really? What? Come on. Really? 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 What, 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 what's with furries and diapers, huh? Why do furries wear diapers? Uh, I'm deferring to my previous answer on this one. Why do furries wear fursuits? Oh my god, I love this question. This is a great question. So furries wear fursuits because it's a direct representation of ourselves. I mean, look at it. We get to be our fursuit. We get to be our better self in some ways. Uh, fursuits are really just a unique way of expressing yourself, of projecting your identity. Sometimes that's an ideal self, sometimes it's just the real self, but fursuits kind of allow us to just be ourselves. A lot of furries struggle with social anxiety, I do too, and wearing a fursuit kind of adds a layer of separation between you and the other person. And so when you're out and about having a good time and kind of like performing as this character, you really get to let yourself kind of come out of your shell. Maybe you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, maybe you're like me and are trans gender. And at the time, you didn't quite pass as your gender, but in your fursuit, you can wear something that allows you to be yourself, to exist as yourself. I think fursuits helped me come out of my shell. They've made a huge difference in my life. Heck, I have a channel where I'm on camera in fursuit every week. I mean, how wild is that? I think furries and fursuits are kind of something that's that's merged together more in the modern era. I mean, fursuits weren't always a thing in the fandom. Fursuits would kind of be considered a late runner as far as like the existence in our community overall. I mean, we didn't even really see the number Number of suits we do now until the 2000s. I think the reason why fursuits have kind of grown to embody the fandom is because it's a direct representation of identity and expression in a way that allows us to kind of just be our characters and interact with people as our characters. Oh god. Oh my god. Really Google? Bringing this one up? Okay, here we go. Why do furries hate cheese graters? You ever hear of cheese grater raccoon? Pretty gnarly, it's pretty nasty. Google at your own risk. I'm not gonna show it here because it's gross, but if you really wanna know the origins of that one, if you wanna know more about that one, I suggest you Google it, but do so at your own risk. It's kinda NSFW, FYI. Oh God, cheese grater raccoon. How is this back in my life? I, I don't recommend anybody looking this up. I really don't, it's gross. <laughs> Why do furries use lipstick emoji? Well, it's because it looks like a dick. All right, I think that's enough of that. So now let's move into Ask Ash. And for those of you that don't know, Ask Ash is a part of the episode where I answer questions from you, my audience and fans. So this week, I'm answering three questions. All right, so first question, how do you travel with your fursuit? That's a great question. Traveling with fursuits can be a little tricky. Obviously, there's a lot of logistics that kind of come into play, especially if you're traveling with a full suit. Fursuit heads are fragile. Even though they're made of foam, they can deform. And bodysuits can get wrinkled and curled inside a container if you travel with them moist. So what I usually do is I take a large plastic container that I got from the container store and I put my bodysuit in first. So I kind of like wrap it up like a sleeping bag and kind of set it into one side. I set my head in and then I kind of put my, my hand paws inside the head and then my foot paws around the muzzle. And that usually keeps everything pretty safe. And you, you always lock it down and you always use a luggage strap because those little locks, sometimes people don't flip them back down completely, especially if it's been through TSA and you can end up losing your fursuit that way. Seriously, good luck getting that thing back if it disappears in the ether that is the airport. We always use luggage straps. That's like my biggest pro tip when traveling with a fursuit. And make sure it loops through the handle too so it can't slip off. You know, that way, if they do get inspected by TSA, they're going to clip it back together and put it all back together and send it out. I always recommend having a hard-sided container. Um, soft containers can deform elements of your suit. Now, most fursuits are pretty flexible. Um, our one for all heads, for example, are not. Um, they're made out of a hard plastic and those can get squished and damaged and broken that way. Uh, resin heads are the same way. Any of the hard 
head bases like plastic or resin are gonna need to travel in a hard case for sure. I know a lot of folks like to carry their heads on the plane because bodysuits are always replaceable, but the heads are not. The head, this, this part of my fursuit is by far the most valuable part of the suit and this part that makes the suit my suit without it you know like like anybody else with this color fur could put their head on it and it would look okay but it's not me you see also pay close attention to how you pack it because you want everything to kind of be set in there nice and level make sure that you fold your ears if they're flexible like mine you know like fold them down like this gently and make sure they're laid in the right way so when you get out of the hotel you take your head out and you kind of reform them by setting them down and kind of forming a little triangle of support oh and when you're done for suiting at a con and you're ready to head home, try not to pack a moist fursuit. <laughs> moist. Try not to pack a moist fursuit in your luggage or in your fursuit case. That can lead to like the development of mold and mildew and things that could potentially ruin the suit. Always try and air it out. Always try and keep air circulating on it when you're wearing it. Um, turn it inside out, disinfect it, and put it back in uh, right side out, pack it and head home. And then make sure you take it out right away. Like take it out, hang it up, brush it straight and make sure everything's okay you know make sure you're not missing pieces make sure that you know you don't have any ripped seams or damaged parts or anything like that all right moving on the next question is what do i do about canceled cons well we've kind of entered into an interesting time in our community with the coronavirus spreading around and conventions being spaces where a lot of people congregate we've so far seen as of making this video three conventions close or reschedule. Now, I would say this, and I think that this is a very important thing to keep in mind as all this is unfolding and as the coronavirus is spreading, everyone's number one concern should be for their personal safety. While this illness might not be a terrible one, um, it can affect others, and it can affect others in a rather negative way. It's shown to have a high mortality rate, and I, for one, don't want to lose any friends. Now, we're less likely to die from it, being the age that we are, but that doesn't rule out people who are at higher risk in our community, people with compromised immune systems and, and the like. We should be conscious and play things safe. So if you're planning on attending one of the cons that got canceled, try and be patient. Try to be understanding. Try and understand that in many cases, this situation was pushed onto them by the governments of their region. Also understand that furry cons, unlike other conventions, so unlike, let's say, E3 or Comic-Con, furry cons are a year-to-year -year budget, being that they basically spend all the money that they make on the last year on the current year. And so when they're trying to put together the next event, basically, if something bad happens, it could bankrupt the con. It could destroy the convention. It might not exist anymore. Now, I think with the government rulings and things that they push through, it's allowed for cons to reschedule per their contracts. And that makes it a little bit more okay. But be sure to try and support the conventions themselves, especially if it's a convention that you love. Go out of your way, you know, help. Maybe pay for super sponsor level or maybe donate money to the convention itself. Try to, you know, make sure that those community events that you love, that you like to go to, still exist tomorrow and, and in the years to come. The saddest thing for me, as somebody who's been in the fandom a little while now, is to see a convention disappear. Especially when it does so, so needlessly. Especially when it happens because of something outside of its control. I, for one, you know, remember what happened at RMFC. Now, mind you, RMFC had a very different issue than what we're dealing with today, but still, it was sad to watch that con go. But we're happy to have Denver here now, and I think Denver is an amazing con, and a better con, because they've learned from those mistakes, and that's kind of the thing. Being that we're all a community, these are our peers. Respect them. Try and help them. This is a tough time for everyone. And on that note, please, 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 Remember the artists and creators that attend those cons and sell their wares for their livelihoods. If you can, spend a little extra money on art. Spend a little extra money getting a commission or buying something that you've always wanted from a particular vendor that you always run into at conventions. Now's a good time to do that because it will help them. It will make a world of a difference to somebody who's basically lost three three prime slots where they usually go and make a significant portion of their income. Every little bit counts. All right, the last question is, how much is a fursuit? Well, this one is a little complicated. So for starters, I would say the average fursuit costs anywhere between 1,700 on the low end and 15,000-ish on the high end. 
So this is barring outliers, you know, like the super cheap fursuits and the super expensive fursuits, you know, like, because there are makers out there that charge more than 15,000, believe it or not. Like, that's an actual thing. But I would say in general, like, to get a fursuit. So let's say you wanted a partial like, fine. So when I purchased this, I think, I'm not 100% on this because I don't remember, but I think it was about $2,000. And for me, that was the head, the hand paws, I have sleeves, I have kind of like a legging set, and I have feet paws and a tail. So that was kind of like what made for you charged back then. It's important to keep in mind that all these prices are also subject to complexity, right? So if it's a super complex character, let's say you have like 20 colors and a bunch of sewed in spots. Yeah, that suit's gonna cost a lot more than like a character like, let's say that's like three or four colors, but natural colors and in a realistic pattern. So with all fursuit makers, you can always get a quote. And the best way to get a quote is to go to their website, first see if they're open for commissions. And if they are, go ahead and email them and send in your ref sheet. Now, the ref sheet should really clearly denote the pattern of your character. So the simpler the ref sheet, the better. So avoid things with like a lot of shading and stuff on them. It should be flat colors with defined patterns laid out in a way that's easy for people to look at and see. So have them go over that pattern and they'll usually get back to you with a pretty reasonable figure and in a reasonable amount of time. Generally speaking, nowadays, I would say expect at least 3500 for a full suit. So that's full body, head, everything else. I know, that's a lot of money. And for a partial, I would say expect at least 1500 So that's like what I'm wearing right now. All right, I think that about wraps it up. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you aren't already, and leave a comment in the comment section below. Again, kind of let me know what kind of content you'd like to see on my channel in the future. Also, if you'd be interested in supporting me and my channel, please consider donating to my Patreon. Just $1 a month is worth more than all the ads here on my channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye. A special shout out to all my lovely patrons, starting with my superfans we have Diana Deprye, Jessica Rose, Brad the Fox Who Writes, Lazy Trash Panda, Beastly Drohan, Wolf Rider, Billy Daxter, and Elliot Excel. Next we have my fans here with Ashira Pony, Snow Wolf X, Veronica Fox, Bear Seneth, Passion Panther, Dan Fox TX, Nova Halvern, and Solace the Wolf. And finally, we have my early access tier with Blue River, Tyler Bane, Tyler H, Scruffy Fincat, Elixir, Cosmo, Trey, Scaleth, Shadowfaxi, Tyler Furlong, Tara Linus, Telijah, Cockernell, That One Canadian Zebra, Runes and Kaz, Jasmine Sawyer, and Mitsukatsa Wild Rose. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to help me out and see my channel grow, please consider donating to my Patreon. We have lots of cool perks, including some fun merch, early access to videos, and having your question featured on one of my episodes in Ask Ash. The link is in the description below. I hope you all have a fabulous day. Thank you. Oh my god, my ass is numb. <sighs> what? Really, Google? Oh my god. How am I supposed to answer this? Seriously, guys. No. Oh, come on. What? Really, Google? Really? Yeah, we're going there. We're, we're going there. You ready for this? I'm not ready for this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I love this question. This is an amazing question. Really? Ugh. Face paw. Ew, you're so warm. Notices your bulge. What the fuck is up with that? Wolves. Because wolves. Moon, moon. The magical wolfy boys. Oh my god. Ugh. Tails. Because tails. Not... Tales from Sonic. The real question is, why don't furries wear fursuits? Cheese Grater Raccoon? Ugh! It's so gross. You don't want to see Cheese Grater Raccoon. Really, you don't. Trust me. You just... no.